Hello, everyone, and welcome to the David Goodman Show. My name is Vanita Lambert, and I'm the host of the show. I have my co-host over here, Donna Boyne, and we have a very special guest, Brenda Burton Selden, who's going to give us some really good information exactly. on taxes. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and get your little phone out. Get go ahead and get your pen. pencil and paper, because you're probably going to want to write some of this down. And... Um, also, I want to mention at the beginning, please follow us on YouTube. I always forget to say that at the yes. end. You know, this is going to be on YouTube, so if you miss something, you could go back and review it. And we're hoping that, you know, a lot of people just start following us. So, you know, become a follower. Okay? So, um, without any further ado, I am going to turn it over to you, Brenda, because um, it's tax season. And if you're anything like me, I wait till the very last second. I haven't even gotten all my stuff together yet. So I'll be stressing in about two weeks <laughs> to get my taxes done and to get all my information. And, um, you know, some of the questions that I have is, you know, one of my main questions, and I think everybody might have this question, Brenda, almost every year, is what else can I do to get more money back, to get a better refund or to pay you know, less taxes. That would be my question. I had to pay a lot last year. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think the reason is I lost my accountant. He did our he did our taxes for like 30 years, and then he got sick, and he referred somebody to me, and I, I did her, and I had to pay a whole bunch of money back because I was unprepared like I am this year. Mm -hmm. But um, I got another guy that uh, my son referred me to, mm -hmm. and he told me, as a business, as having my own, you know, as an independent contractor, mm -hmm. he said either get an LLC or EIN. Mm, and he said good. that way you would be able to get more for your buck. Like I could claim part of my house and all these other things. Mm -hmm. So you care to elaborate <laughs> on that, <laughs> Ms. Selden? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, um, well, first of all, uh, Vernita and Donna, thank you very much for having us on your show with you today. Um, it's a pleasure. Bring you greetings from BBS Tax Service in Bridgeport at 1000 Lafayette Boulevard. And uh, just to respond to your question regarding your business opportunity that you're currently in and what's the best way to minimize your taxes. Um, the, can I interrupt you for one second? I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I did that backwards. Can you just tell um, our audience a little bit about your background and what you do first of all? You know, mm -hmm. just a, a little quick, teeny little bio. A little teeny, And, okay. and your experience and how you educate people, that's so important, I forgot to do that. Mm -hmm. I apologize. It's okay, Vanita. So, back up, walk it back. I'll try to make it quick. Um, <laughs> well, currently, I'm licensed as an enrolled agent um, and being an enrolled agent, you receive your license from the Internal Revenue Service. It requires a strategic um, training um, and a program where you have to take exams and um, you have to pass them and successfully. And thereafter, uh, we're required to take um, CPE credits or obtain instructional credits on tax updates on an annual basis, so I often, I well, I do that constantly. I'm more constantly reading tax information, trying to uh, get a under, better understanding of the different um, ways to structure a um, uh, plan for my customers and my clients. And in terms of uh, the other things that I do, I'm in, uh, a, a, uh, a professor at Post University in Waterbury, Connecticut, where I teach accounting. And uh, we also provide some education and training for uh, individual startup businesses that come to us with new idea, new concepts, and they want to ask the same questions like you. How do I minimize my taxes? <laughs> Save how me do, some money. <laughs> how do I, how do I set, uh, properly set up my business if it's a home-based business or if it's a corporation? How do I structure things where I could uh, set up a savings account for my business? So making proper investments and um, 
kind of minimize, and the main thing is, you know, just minimizing that tax base. So um, it does entail um, coming to us and sitting down with us to get a better understanding of what type of business structure you have and uh, understanding the industry that you're in. Because we have clients that are in healthcare. Right. We have clients that are in professional services, like law firms. Mm -hmm. uh, we have client property management. Insurance. Uh, insurance. So mm -hmm. we got a host of all different yeah. type of clients that knock on our door. So first of all, we'd like to understand what you're doing. Okay. And the other part of the, um, now you mentioned that the other tax advisor mentioned having an EIN number, employee identification number, and also maybe structuring it as a LLC. Well, I would question that first. Okay. It's, is that really necessary if you're a home-based business? Mm -hmm. Do you have to be an LLC to operate from home? That's not always the case. Uh, depending on the, how much income the business is earning, then that's, that makes a difference as well, how you should structure. I have some companies or professional service companies mm -hmm. that um, they're making maybe 250000 on up or half a million dollars, and that might be the kind of structure, uh, either an LLC or a corporation. One of those corporations that I really like is called an S corporation or a partnership. Oh. They don't pay taxes. Mm -hmm. They don't pay taxes. The individual uh, uh, shareholders, members of the organization pay the taxes. And it's, we consider they call them pass-through entities. So mm -hmm. setting up those type of structures might be more meaningful uh, for a business that's generating a half a million dollars on up in income, right. or that has the means to do that in the long term. It's so that the corporation doesn't pay the taxes, the individuals don't. don't. The individuals do, excuse me, and it flows through Flow, down okay. to the individuals. And individuals, as you know, pay a, uh, pay a different uh, tax under a tax bracket, much lower than, than some the than corporations. Okay. Yeah. So what about for sole proprietors, you know, or 1099s like myself? So I think the reason he may have mentioned that is because I file married jointly with my husband who works for Yale. He works mm -hmm. for a regular company, mm -hmm. and then I'm a 1099, and I work from mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. And so he thought that I might benefit yeah, more true. so since we file that way and being at home, I can write off, I don't know, 55% of my house or electric bill. Or, I'm just using that as an example. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't quote me on anything I say and don't try mm -hmm. to claim it because mm -hmm. I am not a tax accountant. Full mm -hmm. disclaimer. Yeah. <laughs> she is. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so there, we can, we can there get is it from a her. certain percentage that right. you can write off. Mm -hmm. um, and the, um, as a sole proprietor or LLC, you can do the same thing along with the, you know, the regular 1040 tax okay. return. So again, um, the becoming an LLC, a limited liability company is what it's actually called, um, you register with the state of Connecticut. And once you register, you have to realize, once you, you know, you, you have to file with them, um, and then you have to pay a fee to the state. Now, as a sole proprietor, you register with them, but there's no fee involved. Mm -hmm. so, I'm interested in everything so that does not come with the there's fee. There's some alternatives so, there. Okay. So okay. knowing the alternatives, knowing what uh, tax bracket you're in, you know, because you file married, file a joint with your husband. Mm -hmm. He has a salary. And so those are some things that overall the... the um, a tax provider would be looking at. The other thing that I, I like to recommend to my clients is tax planning. So rather than, now this is the period that you should be beginning to set up an appointment with your tax advisor uh, to um, kind of get an understanding of what to look for next year. Hmm. What to look for in 2023. Okay. Because it's right around the corner. It is. Yes. After April 15th, that's the time to start sitting down and talking to your tax advisor. There's a lot of things that we realize that go on in 
our lives. Different stages mm -hmm. and different planning. Now you just mentioned to me you had a granddaughter. So sweet. Yes. <laughs> so, so sweet. <laughs> so eventually that granddaughter is going to grow up and go to college. Mm -hmm. Might be a good time for the two of you mm -hmm. to be thinking about college planning for her. Mm -hmm. And how would that affect you as grandparents? Mm -hmm. Is there any deduction or anything available that you can do, get? Or maybe perhaps the parents could, should consider. Eventually, you said your husband is working mm -hmm. and he's working at Yale. Mm -hmm. There's going to become a time he's going to want to retire and maybe take his beautiful queen and they relocate somewhere else. I'm just using Not that North Carolina. I'm, I'm staying in <laughs> Connecticut. I'm letting you know right now. <laughs> I'm just using that as an example. But that's going to come. Yeah. So I get you. there may be a time and maybe sometime in the, well, close to the future, you look at things like that. You do. You look at things like that. You know, I, I you know, we look, we see those kind of uh, op planning opportunities come up all the time where people, um, they have children, the children eventually grow up and they move out of the house, well, they go to college and then, you know, the there's parents. There's no money for college. Well, well yeah, but well, there's, you know, scholarship opportunities out mm -hmm. there. Um, there's some, um, but there's student loans as always. Um, but with those opportunities in going to college, there's tax credits that are available for, uh, for the students that the parents can take on their own tax return. So those are some important points as, as parents to consider, you know, where's, where, are, where is the funding, you know, prior to they get, you know, the kids get to that point. And then talking to their tax advisors, well, what do I need to do to prepare for that? You know, what kind of benefits do this, does the state offer? You know, the state has, a, you know, was it a five, uh, 529, 529 mm -hmm. program, mm -hmm. you know, the CHET program. And now it's being uh, managed by Fidelity, um, which I think it's a good opportunity for parents to take that into consideration because those funds that they put in, they're deductible under the state's, uh, under, under state's tax mm -hmm. return. So there's there's many different opportunities wow. that they can consider. Yes. So is there's an age age bracket there for for that. Well, depending on the um, you know normally that applies to parents to have to have students that are in college. Oh, great. And or go getting ready to go to college. You, you know you don't have to be, you know you can parents can start with that Chet program. Right. They can start right away. Yeah. You know zero. Yeah. Let me ask you a question about the five twenty nine because I am. In insurance, and mm -hmm. I have a, a different opinion about you know mm -hmm. college funding for kids. Now, if you set up a five twenty nine, which is a tax free mm -hmm. uh, college fund for a child mm -hmm. until they go to college, what if that child decides not to go to college? Do you have to pay taxes on the money? More, I believe you may. I'm okay. not exactly sure, but I, I okay. So but that's, that's something. They may have to, you know, okay. because it wasn't used for the purpose intended. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why when, in my business, mm -hmm. I always recommend uh, life insurance, universal life insurance, because you can build up as much, you know, you can save for a college fund and a universal life insurance policy, which has a living benefit and a death benefit. Mm -hmm. And there are no restrictions, mm -hmm. no age restrictions, mm -hmm. no requirements. You can take mm -hmm. the money out when you want and use it for whatever you want. And that was, and I didn't know about that, mm -hmm. you know, when we were coming up. Not, we didn't have any money to save for college, first mm -hmm. of all. Let me just put it, put it out there. But those are some of the things that I didn't know about. Mm -hmm. So what if you saved all this money in a 529 and your daughter was just this great little ballerina mm -hmm. and got a scholarship mm -hmm. and didn't need it and wanted to buy a car or a house? then you would have to pay taxes on that lump sum of money mm -hmm. that you didn't use. So that's mm -hmm. something, you know, that I yeah. would throw out there too. So I'd like yeah. to have yeah. a lot of different I'll options. Yeah. But let's just say somebody like my son, I want you to give, you know, our mm -hmm. audience a little basic information. Can I just interject on oh, what yeah, you just, sure. that last one? Um, in regards to that 529 and, and the, you know, the funds not used for intended, mm -hmm. um, that's where that planning comes in. 
Okay. You know, I'm hopefully whoever invested those funds, they would be aware that, okay, by now my kid's not going to go to college. They're right. going to do something else. Yes. You know, they might go to a trade school instead. <laughs> so that would be an opportunity for them to divert the funds mm -hmm. or roll them over mm -hmm. and or talk to a financial advisor about that so that they would not lose. But I still think it's a good opportunity. Yes. You know, I think yes. any time saving funds, for whatever purpose, because mm -hmm. we never know what we're going to use that it for. Exactly. That we was never. what I was going to ask. If there's yeah. a way to you yeah. know, plan that before oh, yeah. it reach the point where sure. the, the child don't go to school. Yes, know? I think there is yeah. an opportunity. But as you stated, they could be, you know, if they don't divert by a certain time period, I, I would say that. They more than likely will I would be. say it too. It's, it's good for us all to have life insurance, plus mm -hmm. have that in line, too. Yeah. Both of them is very important. But yeah. here's the thing about life insurance. Mm -hmm. If you know how to utilize it, you may not need a million dollars in life insurance, okay? You mm -hmm. just may not need that. But in order to take advantage of the tax-free benefits of mm -hmm. life insurance, you may need a million dollars because you're not going to pay taxes on that money. You mm -hmm. pay taxes on it at the beginning because when you pay a life insurance policy mm -hmm. it's getting paid out of your checking account mm -hmm. so you mm -hmm. already pay the taxes on it mm -hmm. and it is one of the two contracts in the world that is tax-free to your beneficiary the death benefit is 100 percent tax-free you never have to have to explain it all of the income that you put into it mm -hmm. is tax-free you may pay a small capital gains tax on you know the gains but all the money you put into it is tax free. So you get to take it out. So if you take that money out, say you put 50 grand into a life insurance policy and you save it for, I don't know, 20 years, mm -hmm. you get to take out the first 50 grand tax free. Mm -hmm. And you can't do that in any other type of uh, policy, any other type of contract, except for maybe a Roth. And a Roth is in the, pop, in the uh, market, so it can go up and down. You never lose that. It is a guaranteed. Um, Guaranteed An income, yeah. yeah, guaranteed investment, and it zero is a hero. You can never lose the money on it like you could in a in a mutual fund. So anyway, I don't want to get in too much into mm -hmm. insurance right, because I, I have a talk question. About taxes. Mm -hmm. I want to ask, ask a question because you mentioned something about um, home business because I want to. I love braiding, and I know that you don't have to have a license for braiding at home. Mm -hmm. How do I? Go start. yes. How do well, I start? You, one of the ways to start to get develop your customer base. Yes, I started um, that. Now the other um, concern being such that you know you're doing it from home, mm -hmm. you may want to reach out to the town mm -hmm. that you live in and find out if you need a registration with the town. There's okay. a document called a trade name certificate. Trade name. Yeah, trade name certificate. The city okay. of Bridgeport, Stratford, all the towns, local towns. Okay. They do have those and it's it's a it's a small dollar amount to do complete it. And okay. they register your business in the town um and then you want to but you want to make sure you have some insurance. Okay. On the premises, mm -hmm. you know, that that includes your operation right and then you um you know you want to make sure you have you know a good set of books records you know how you're gonna you know track your income Come, right. and track your expenses have your own bank account separate from your own um personal account right um and you need your clients that's and then it you start braiding yeah <laughs> you just need the clients yeah. and that's it and you know um and i guess from there you want to make sure you you know, be prepared to market yourself and, okay. and be in good health yes. to do what you need to do. That's yes. the main thing. So good. that's how I would look at it. All you right. know, thank you so much. You're welcome. That helps. Yeah, that, that helps. that's the main thing. Yeah. So the number one key, I think, is planning. No matter what you're going to do, whether it's insurance, mm. whether it's taxes, whether it's whatever. I have plans. But I am terrible with my taxes. I'm really good in insurance, but I'm terrible with my taxes. I don't have it all planned out. What I'll do be, you mean I'll by be that? scrambling. What do you oh, mean by terrible? Oh, I got to go and find out how many miles I drove for the whole year. Okay. I got to go back and do my appointments. I got, I got a bag full of receipts. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I'm bad. It's called documentation. <laughs> I know. It's, and I'm it, looking it, for the easiest way to do that. Okay. Well, there's, there's many. On my phone. Th where? There, no. 
No. I mean, you could. There's different vehicles out there where you can track, um, you know, your mileage on your phone. Um, I all, I, I've used different, you know, resources Apps on to your do phone it. And stuff, yeah. yeah, there's many there, but you know, you go back, and sometimes I've said to my clients, "Look, I mean, how many times have you, um, how many times do you take your car in to get it?" all change and we're, we're supposed to take it in every quarter right yeah. every 3,000 miles 3, 000, maybe right. or three months yeah okay the time and when we do that and when we do that we they have the mileage okay and that's one way to see how often you travel but for business versus personal the IRS prefers that you provide a detailed log which says, which says where, you've, where you've gone, you know, um, you know, if you left home or you left your place of business, office space, um, to the client's location, you're supposed to document that. Right, right. Document uh, how often and, mm -hmm. and maybe the, perp and the purpose as well. Why did you go there? Or why did you take that, per not so much why you took them out to lunch, but if, it's, if you took someone out, for lunch, um, was it for business? Right. Okay. And I got tra you. and travel as well. You know, they they we prefer to have a detail. I always ask my clients for a detail log. I just I'm trying can't. to do that, Brenda. I'm really trying. Well, another way, to, <laughs> another example is if you have your calendar uh -huh. on your phone, keeping a record of where you've gone. Mm -hmm. You know, I yeah. have it. Today in my rec in my Check calendar in. that and I this, came here today. And this is locked for business. And this is the deduction because uh, the purpose of this is for my business. My business right. So I put down the time, uh -huh. who I'm going to see, oh, and no. why. And yes. why. And, and it's on my calendar. And it's a business expense. And it's a business expense. And you deduction. can count the mileage. Yes. Or whatever else you may do. Good. Yep, mileage. Especially awesome. now that the gas prices are up. <gasps> I'm gonna count it. I want I want it, I want that deduction. <laughs> So That's that means right. I'm going to track it. Speaking yeah. of mileage, okay, mm -hmm. I got to interrupt you here. How many miles can you claim in a given year? What's the maximum? Is the it like 50,000 or 100,000? No. Is there a max? No. There is them? Okay. It's based on what was you it, do. Was it reasonable, ordinary, mm -hmm. and or necessary? Okay. And I so work by appointment. Out. I go to house to house. So I work by appointment. So that for me, it's always you know on the road it's and always is it, and it, reasonable is, is it always listed in your calendar where you're going i started this app that i need to go back and label no no i'm talking about Everlands. your regular calendar oh yes so you all my appointments are written down see, yeah see that's what makes to make it more difficult to get it done because you're adding all these extras to it just keep it simple you have your calendar you say where you're going and mm -hmm. who you're going to see okay and then you go back 12 months later and still there. That's right. Am I right? Sounds yes. simple to me. They're still there. Use that. There. <laughs> that is it's, so true. Yeah, keep it simple. Um, and then you'll be more apt to utilize it. Mm. Um, I mean, I have one client of mine, she's in healthcare. She gives me a beautiful spreadsheet. I said, this is awesome. I, I know who that many, is. I don't know. I don't have too many people that do this. But they do. She does. It makes yep. it work easier. And they look, I mean, she does a fantastic job. It makes my job easy. All yeah. I have to do is just maybe ask her, massage it a little bit, ask questions. And then I'll just take it and pop it into the tax return. Okay. So, so um, I know you have to take your CE credits and, you know, classes every single year. Oh, my goodness. We only got four minutes left. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. So it's I want fun. you to have this time. Forget okay. about my questions. Okay. So is there something um, basic, important, or whatever you want to share with the audience? We have about four minutes left. Okay. And I want you to have all four minutes of it to give us okay. some good advice, whether you're mm -hmm. just, you know, you just had your first job and you don't know what to do with your taxes or where to go. Most people just run to HR Block or something like that. So what do you recommend, Brenda? Well, I think, um, from my opinion, one of the things you – and when you're choosing a, or selecting a tax preparer or you're selecting an accountant, you want to select somebody that you can trust, mm -hmm. okay? And you want, you know, not only are you looking for the 
um, knowledge and experience and um, but I think trust is a big factor yes. you know yes. are you and accepting I, new clients I am accepting okay. some. Yes, I, I am quite busy. Thank God. It's Let us know how to get in touch with you. And <laughs> that best way is you can give us a call on our number there. Plus, I, we indicated we're at 1000 Lafayette Boulevard in Bridgeport, Connecticut. We've been at that location for six years. And we're, you know, we're, you know, clients that, you know, have no problem finding us. And we work with small businesses, we work with corporations. And we also do some bookkeeping for clients. So um, we look forward to providing service for you, and we, we thank you yes. for inviting us again. And you, you know, you also offer like a lot of training classes, a lot of online training classes. You still do that, or I know you do. Well, did. we have a seminar coming up, we're calling an investment boot camp, and it's okay. going to involve investments and taxes. And that's on March 31st at okay. 7 p.m. Okay. So I hope... Uh, is there is a cost? Well, you can go on. Uh, it's going to be on Eventbrite, and there's no cost. It's free. Okay. Oh. That's good. It's, it's free. free. Okay. Um, another question I wanted to ask you. Now, you work for businesses. You also, do you also train folks to do their payroll, or do you do payroll? I know there's a, a list of things that you do. So. Well, we do not, we prepare payroll. For, okay. And uh, we, we actually provide QuickBooks training. Okay. That's right. software training, mm -hmm. helping our clients, you know, keep their books up to date and current. So okay. we do a lot of that. Yes, yes. Yeah. a lot of businesses mm -hmm. need that. I mean, yeah. Almost every business I know of outsourced their payroll to, you yeah. know, a couple of names. Well, yeah. One of the names we used to use is Paychecks mm -hmm. or, you know, something like that to get yeah. them done or somebody to train them. Because you could spend a lot of time, what if minutes? you're a business owner, doing payroll. That yeah. can take an awful lot of time. Yeah. We, we outsource some of our payroll and then we, some, we prepare some in-house. Okay. But we have partners that have worked in that field that are very good in terms of, you know, helping with us with payroll, helping our clients closing out during the year. Um, we work with nonprofits too, I forgot to mention that. We do oh, okay. a lot of work with those as well. Mm -hmm. So okay. I look forward to anyone giving us a call and, you know, helping us, you know, help you, you yes. know. And um, it's a real good benefit to be here with you today. Thank you so much, Lots Brenda, of information. for coming on Thank you for the yeah. show and welcome. sharing all that great information. And um, you're taking new clients, so please give her a call. Thank yes. you very much. And this is the David Goodman Reality and Truth Show, and, and we're on your, on your side. side.